軍お産を控えた妹君あなたは手を組む相手を待ち手を受けたばかりでござってな顔ヒアスレンダーダーまあ釜湯でよりはしたバーロン They will deliver us to Osaka. I don't understand with us anyway. Someone died fighting. And my translator, what becomes of her? しましたぞ取らな我らの結びつきを急ぎ代わり専門になっておった頃に見えたとしたらそれはするのはもうやめにしようではありませんかどうぞ身のない夢物語をらしいならなんだいつもしいや大行くの方で答えらと共におられることが信じられません In the opening scene of Shogun Episode 8, Toranunga and his entire clan go to Edo, where the former regent will spend 49 days grieving the loss of his son. The army of Sayaki Nobutatsu is positioned on Edo's edge to make sure Toranunga doesn't try to play the wise guy. The main focus of Shogun's 7th episode was Sayaki Nobutatsu's, Toranunga's half brother Treason. Toranunga relied on Nobutatsu's assistance in his battle against Ashido and the other regents. However, Nobutatsu made the decision to become a regent himself, compelling Toranunga to give up in Osaka. This did not sit well with John, who made it clear that he did not approve of Toranunga's ideas. Having stated that, Nagakado attempted to murder Sayaki Nobutatsu. After everything went terribly wrong, Nagakado struck his skull on a wet rock and passed away. No, he wasn't the target of the rock's toss. The guy staggered and went down. It remains to be seen, though, if this will make Toranunga weaker or weaker in general. We are now on episode 8. They will take him to Osaka after the period of mourning is ended. John is informed by Mariko that Toranunga is no longer required to do his duties and is free to sail back home with his troops. Mariko refuses to travel with John, saying she would stick by Toranunga all the way through. Ashido makes a few fleeting amorous overtures to Lady Okiba. The latter does not explicitly reject this unexpected suggestion for a marriage partnership, but she also does not express any opposition to it. Who knows what she's thinking, then? In any case, Omi, Yabashiga, Hiramatsu, Buntaro, and several others toast to Nagakado's memory, but only Omi calls attention to the fact that Toranunga's capitulation truly betrays Nagakado's legacy. As they travel to Nagakado's burial, Yabashiga makes several observations. To begin with, Toranunga will not be present at Nagakado's burial. Secondly, Toranunga is not in accord with the Edo generals. For this reason, they are attending the burial in their armor. Thirdly, they have enough weaponry to occupy Osaka. As part of Toragana's capitulation, Hiramatsu orders Yabashiga to just travel to Osaka and hand Ashido the previously indicated weaponry. Despite his disbelief, Yabashiga doesn't object. A sick Toranunga is seen watching his son's burial from his castle in the meantime. Mariko and Lady Rin discuss how Lady Okiba's survivalist spirit and Toranunga's capitulation would impact their respective destiny. Buntaro interrupts, perhaps establishing his redemption narrative, saying he wants to prepare tea for Mariko. The story then switches to Suji, who belittles John for turning Japanese and leaving his ship's crew behind. Subsequently, he informs Toranunga that Lady Okiba is manipulating events behind Ashido's back and that the Christian regents would not support him. Thus, he requests that Toranunga team up with Lady Okiba. In the best case scenario, the heir will support Toranunga in such case, giving him the power to overcome Ashido. Hiramatsu accepts this suggestion. Mariko also does. Toranunga, however, makes it apparent that he intends to proceed with his surrender. He assures Suji that he would still be able to build his church and that it won't affect his pledge to him. Furthermore, he requests that Suji travel to Osaka and accurately describe all he's seen in Edo. Hiramatsu sees that as a sign that Toranunga is pulling a huge hoax and has more tricks in his sleeve. 
Then, Buntaro and Mariko once again come into focus. Buntaro suggests that they commit suicide together and stay away from whatever Ishido or Okibo have in store for them while seeming to be making tea for Mariko. On the other hand, he poses it as though he is giving her a gift that she has been anticipating. Luckily, Mariko stops Buntaro in his tracks and tells him to postpone his murderous thoughts of her and stopping her from living the life she truly wants. Because it moves the awful Buntaro to tears, this scene in Shogun is the best. More television shows and movies should include sad males crying like Buntaro. John just gets into a heated fight with Salomon in an attempt to rally his soldiers so they can repair the Erasmus and head home. The next day, John tries to team up with Yabashiga. He claims he can assemble the personnel required to get the Erasmus running. However, he needs a flag to fly. In order to guarantee their future in these turbulent times, Torunanga wants Yabashiga to support him as he approaches his demise and vice versa. John goes so far as to remind Yabashiga of the cliff event in order to emphasize the idea that one may control their own destiny. But because Yabashiga doesn't want to betray Torunanga, he declines to work with John. In another scene, Lady Jin surveys the plot of land that would serve as her tea house's protected area. It is revealed that Suji's church would be located close to the courtesan site when he arrives. The Christians won't object to this arrangement if they are progressive. They will be against this arrangement if they are regressive. The metaphorical ball is now in their court, thanks to Torunanga. While pleading with Okiba to free the captives and presumably regretting what she has done to Okiba's mental state, Lady Dioin dies back in Osaka. The generals of Edo, Hiramatsu, Buntaro, Yabashiga, Omi, and others attend the signing of the Pledge of Loyalty. Torunanga declares that Yabashiga will travel to Osaka to bring the firearms to Ishido along with the names of everyone who will also surrender. All of the generals disagree with Torunanga's choice to surrender without a fight. Remaining unwavering, Torunanga declares that he will not tolerate any more deaths at his hands. Hiramatsu issues a warning, saying that Torunanga will be killed by seppuku if he doesn't engage in combat. Not even that can convince Torunanga. So, after slashing his belly, Hiramatsu calls Buntaro to behead him. Even when it appears like Torunanga has given up on himself, he assures Buntaro that he shouldn't give up on Torunanga. And with that, Hiramatsu passes away. Subsequently, Torunanga discloses that everything was a part of his scheme to align John and Yabashiga with him while creating the impression that Ashido and Okiba were against him. It seems that Hiramatsu's passing was a necessary sacrifice. How may Torunanga benefit from this? I'm curious to see if it really affects Torunanga's strategy to eliminate Ashido and Okiba, but I'm not sure. Shogun, Episode 8, ends with Lady Dioin getting ready for her burial. It appears that Lady Okiba agrees to Ishido's suggestion for them to be married and establish themselves as Japan's power couple. John and Yabashiga may be seen getting ready to invade, rather than submit, in Osaka. Omi alerts Yabashiga of the potential costs of this partnership, but Yabashiga ignores him because he is too relieved that his death is not in vain for Torunanga. But Mariko spoils Yabashiga's intentions by promising to see to it that he gets to Osaka and gives himself in on behalf of Torunanga. It remains to be seen now if Yabashiga would have the guts to stand up to Mariko. Returning to Edo, Torunanga ends his stay with the sick old sad man and pays a visit to Nagakado's cremation site to express his gratitude for inadvertently allowing him the time he needs to amass his resources. It's clear that Torunanga intends to pour blood and that he has an army within easy sight of everyone. He simply waits for his adversaries to become complacent so that they are completely caught off guard when he launches his attack. The miniseries' last two episodes will undoubtedly be jam-packed with action. Thus, be ready for everything that may arise.